Hi, and welcome to Talk RX with Dr. Neha. I have a special guest today, uh, Vicki Saunders. So welcome, Vicki. Thank you very much. And, you know, typically I ask a question. You know, I ask uh, my guests to ask a question, whether it's on communication, whether it's on power, um, whatever it is. And so, Vicki, what's on your mind and what do you want to talk about? Because we can, we can sure. really do anything. Uh, yeah, what's on my mind is language. That's okay. one of the things I think about a lot with, with the work that we're doing with CEO. Um, we want to move to a new paradigm. It's a shift in mindset yeah. from where well, we are today. Why don't you tell them? Tell them a little yeah. bit about what CEO so is. So CEO, uh, we're really trying to solve the problem of how do you get money into the hands of female entrepreneurs who have great innovations that are going to create a better world. 4% of venture capital goes to women. It's four been like that percent. for decades. Yeah, 4%. Only 4%. So we've created a whole new model to do that. So 1,000 women come together. They contribute $1,100 each. Yep. We create this pool of capital, and then we uh, loan it out to 10 female entrepreneurs that are selected by all of the women. And not, not like five people in a boardroom deciding whether right. you're worthy. Yeah, we trust the intuition <laughs> of thousands of women, basically, to, to select companies they care about. Yep. And, uh, and then we also, they get access to our networks and our buying power and our expertise to help grow their business. So it's not just the money. So I want to say that when yep. you were speaking, that was one of the things that I really, really enjoyed. It's like you use a holistic approach. Yep. It's not just giving people money. It's about uh, giving them support. It's about mentoring them as they grow, yeah. and it's about honoring entrepreneurship. Totally. Right? Yeah. Unique ideas. And so that whole piece, and I, my favorite part was when, when Vicki was asked, what if somebody doesn't pay back their loan? Or what if it doesn't you know, pan out the way you want it to? Your answer really moved me, which was, well, we're coming to help. Right. We, it's like the voice outside has never been that. It's been the idea inside which, oh, I'm a failure, oh, I can't do this. And there's this way that you have created a voice outside that says, oh, so sometimes unexpected things happen. And if they do, let's come together and let's solve it. Yeah, I mean, I think it takes a village. We've said this uh, many times. I don't know why business would be any different. And so we have all that we need around us. And I think one of the challenges that we see that female entrepreneurs uh, often have is asking for help. Yeah. So as women, we're great at giving. Yep. We give and give and give. Yep. But there's an in-breath and an out-breath, and you need to give and receive to be right. whole, give and, and receive. And to keep it flowing, right. right? To keep the energy flowing. So tell me what you were saying about language. Yeah, so I think, you know, one of the challenges is, is how do we move from this place of feeling like we're in scarcity to abundance, and from this crazy winner-takes-all world into something that's, you know, more perpetual flow of capital. And, uh, you know, I was trying to figure out, like, what the spirit underneath this we call radical generosity. And I remember um, when I talked to my mom about it for the first time, she said, why do you have to call it radical? <laughs> well, it's just generosity. And I said, you know, the challenge is if I just say the word generosity, people go, okay, whatever. Right, right. But when we put radical in front of it, they're like, what's that? Right. And it's so almost it's, the unexpected. Yeah. It's right? kind of like stepping up. Uh, and so we don't call you an investor in our community. We call you an activator yep. uh, because you're activating your capital, but also your network yep. and your expertise yep. and your, you know, er being an early customer, your buying power. Well, it's bigger than investing. Investing right. might be, I give you some money and that's an investment. Right. And then it stays stuck in this little box of, oh, it's just money. Right. right? And, and this yeah. idea is an activator. So it's about, it, activator to me even sounds like movement, right? Yeah. So it's phenomenal. I like, I like the language you're using because the language you're using actually feels to me um, inspiring, right? And it's unexpected. Yeah. And it's like, uh, I think in order to catch people's attention in a busy world that we're in, right. um, I mean, marketing's part of it. Right. And, you know, I used to think it was a dirty word. I'm, I'm a doctor. And so I thought, marketing? Like, okay. who would do that? Like, I'm just going to help people. Right. Except when I became an entrepreneur and I realized I wanted to pave a new path, what I realized is ra whether it's radical generosity or activators, you now have gotten someone's attention to have them thinking differently. Yeah. And I think that's what we're doing. So to use that in our language actually matches that which we are trying to do. Absolutely. And I think you know the, the thing that we're constantly aware of uh, as we're sort of building this and listening closely is um, we, I just feel like we constantly don't have words to describe the kind of behavior that we want to see, right? So we're mm -hmm. always working on that. Uh, and even with the, you know, like money is loaned out to entrepreneurs, paid back, and then loaned out again. Yep. And so then people say, well, what is that? Like, you need a name for that. Like, everybody wants things named, too. They want it in a nice, neat right. box. And so part of the other thing that we have on the language side is not 
naming things too early. Right? Yep. So I don't really know what CEO wants to be. I don't know yep. what radical generosity is yep. creating. And so when people are like, you know, what are the three check boxes on this? I'm like, it's too early to do that. Because yep. I also feel like when you label things, they kind of lose their energy. Yeah. So it's And so I want to let all of you know we're filming live at World Women 17 in New Zealand. So if you hear extraneous noise, <laughs> this is part of filming live. Right. So you're going to hear it's other people. The energy of it. Yeah, yeah the energy around us. Um, you know what's so interesting about that is you are a true entrepreneur. Because basically what you're saying is... Let's just sit in this ambigu ambiguity. Yeah. <laughs> Let's sit for a little while in this chaos. Yeah. And what will emerge will emerge. And you trust in that. Yeah, I do. Right? Yeah, and I'm super comfortable in ambiguity. And I know lots of people aren't. <laughs> uh, but I, re I remember once my coach said to me, so, uh, you know, we were talking about risk. And I'm like, I don't view anything I do as being risk. And mm. she goes, yeah, because you're off the charts on your risk <laughs> profile. You don't think it's risk. But other people really do think it's risk. So I think that it is a, definitely the spirit of an entrepreneur is to be able to be very comfortable yeah. in ambiguity, which unfortunately all of us need to get more comfortable at this now in this crazy world we're in. Yeah, we're in, a, we're in an uncertain time, an yeah. unstable world that's changing really fast. I think part of it also is the internet and technology you know, if we think of the industrial times to um, farming to I industry, that was like a hundred year evolution where people mm -hmm. kind of moved out and changed from farming to urban areas. Yeah. So our human experience could change over a hundred years. I'd say internet and technology has been the last 20 years and it's changed the equivalent amount as it changed in a hundred years. Right. And you can't really speed up awareness and you know human development and I think there's almost like this push now in the world for us to accelerate that yeah which is just really crazy I mean you cannot expect humans to move as quickly <laughs> as capital yeah right in, in the way that the world and as technology with yeah. Moore's law so this is a real struggle that we're having especially with artificial intelligence that's coming in and yep. you know our you know robots gonna be smarter than people are we gonna have self-driving cars right it's totally happening yeah right? and so it's the social construct just cannot possibly keep up with the technology, which is a real sort of tension yeah. uh, that pushes against us all the time. It's yeah. interesting. Absolutely. So in your uh, world, there's activators who uh, loan out $1,000. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't get it back. Right. But what they do is they invest it in these entrepreneurial women. Yeah. What do you call those women? Ventures. Ventures. Yeah, so they're okay. ventures. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I want to uh, have a call to action, which is maybe you're watching this and you're thinking, I want to support other women, right? Let's create that strength and connection that is a wave that is happening in the world. And maybe you're an activator. Maybe you're someone who's a venture. Is that what we call it? And if that's you and you have an idea, but you don't have the support you think you need, um, I want to make sure that you go to CEO.com and you check out the resources that are available to you. And as far as the language, right, I'm kind of with you on the, we're kind of making it up as we go. And I'm actually even comfortable trying things and then saying, eh, no, not that. Let's do it again, yeah. right? And so I want, to, I want to challenge each of you out there. Do you wait until something's perfect before you'll put it down? Or are you willing to step out and put something down and say, you know what, this is what it feels like today, and then give yourself enough grace that if it changes tomorrow, that's okay too. Because I would say that as I have made so many mistakes as an entrepreneur, I have lost a lot of money with making the wrong decision. Now what I say to myself when that happens is, Neha, you're building a new path. You're paving a new path in communication and medicine. You're going to make mistakes. And this is just the price of being an entrepreneur and kind of going into the jungle and paving a path. Sometimes you hit a tree, you know? And so I'm really, I have a lot of grace for myself. And I consider it like my tuition for life school, right? And um, so now it doesn't scare me as much. And I'm more willing to take that step. So is there something you'd like to ask? Uh, for everyone watching? Yeah, I mean, so if you're a, a, an entrepreneur who has $50,000 in revenue this year um, and you're majority woman-owned and women-led, this is a real opportunity for you to step into this network. I think when you're an entrepreneur, you often feel very alone. Um, and so just imagine what would, how you would 
think differently and act differently if you were surrounded by thousands of radically generous women who wanted to offer their support to you. Imagine having a thousand women on your team, what that would do for you. Uh, and you can find out more at sheeo.world. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for having, having this time to share. And I am really inspired. So please check, check out her website and uh, donate. Thanks. Thank you.